Hello everyone and welcome to another video from the Traders Terminal. This is Jordan and today we're going to talk about some of the longer term opportunities. I'm starting with Euro Dollar and the, the idea of this video was, I know everyone has their different approach to trading, especially on the lower time frames with their strategies. But my goal in this video is to show you uh, not so much the way I'm trading, but the output of my analysis which is going to basically uh, show you what I expect from the given asset to happen in the next one or two steps, okay? Just to make it as simple as possible and to give you straightforward output. So starting with the Euro door, we're already trading in this consolidation. This is where we got a reversal pattern or at least what I assume to be a reversal pattern. And after this consolidation, I would expect for the price to push up. Now, in the very, I would say, midterm, my idea is that this thing did not yet finished. I think that we're going to revisit 110, 108, pretty much this zone, approximately right here. Once that happens, I would be expecting bullish moves throughout the year. So. Um, if you're looking for these shorter term opportunities, in my opinion, we can be still looking for the sales and this high should be holding with me, which means something like that is very possible to happen. And then uh, we're going to see further continuation lower. But as I said, I'm not going to go into too many details of the analysis, but simply explain what do I expect to happen in the next one or two steps. Next on the list is cable. For cable, we can see a very similar situation uh, where the price got stuck inside this wide range. And this range is with the boundaries of 142, 143, 5, approximately this zone. And the bottom extreme is around 112. To make it again as simple as possible, my idea here is uh, that as long as 144 zone is holding and we do not have a real breakout above, I'm not referring to false breaks, I'm talking about the real breakout above, confirmed breakout. It means that I'm looking for short opportunities and this is how I'm going to handle it. So. The hard time frame analysis for me here is probably going to suggest this or immediate push down, depending on how the price is developing on daily four hour chart, where the cycle stand right here, etc. But the longer term view is as long as we hold this high, expectation for cable is to continue lower. Next on my list is dollar cut. Now, I definitely like this pair. And I've been following this structure for a long time. It kind of speaks for itself. Um, this is a range. I do expect for the price to push upwards. We got a bounce from the bottom, which is the projection of this line dropped here by the pip. We're expecting that. Uh, at the moment, what I do see is a consolidation, something that starts to remind ascending triangle, which is perfect because we're starting to build bullish pressure here, which means my focus for the higher time frame setups would be bullish. That could be pullbacks going to uh, levels that we like, and we can see where we have a bit of a cluster zone here. So we're just slightly above this zone. And if we go down for a second to the daily chart, we can see that this zone remains here. And pretty much whatever technical tools you're using, pullbacks, buys, in my opinion, makes a lot of sense here. Once this range is broken, likely to the upside, uh, final target to the top, of course. We have a middle zone, but in general, this is how I see it in the longer term. So, that's about door cut. Moving forward to Aussie door, which could be slightly more interesting and not so straightforward, but I'm going to walk you through my 
uh, analysis very briefly, very quickly, and I hope it will make sense. So I'm looking at this bearish structure, which in my opinion is completed. If this is true and uh, it makes sense, then we can expect for the price to correct itself. We can already see the first leg of this correction happening on the lower time frames. We can see a pullback or what I assume to be a pullback. And this is where things could become a bit trickier because if you focus on the red lines right here, that could be considered something like that kind of impulsive structure, which is now giving us and starting to provide divergences with false breaks. And basically the green scenario of the count is telling us that the next step from here or here could be pushing slightly lower, right? We need to, to figure out where the reversal is on the lower time frames. But in general, the idea is that this count is giving us bullish output. If we take a look at this slightly different, which is kind of a zigzag structure, so basically two down, two up, two down, in order to form a larger ABC like this, we're once again at the bottom of this, which if we look at the yellow count, count is giving us bullish output as well. So it doesn't matter that much was the actual count here if any of those two counts plus the previous wave and everything that comes together to suggest uh, that we're going up if all that holds true the idea is to look for buys and this is exactly what i'm planning to do so looking for these reversals probably going to see something uh, to the downside a bit more could be taking a week, a month, I don't know. I'm not very good in predicting the time, uh, but the price levels are clear, right? So once this final move down is completed, once we get the reversals, my focus will be on the bullish side here. Moving on to Euro pound, which is one of my favorites. And look at it. I mean, this is absolutely gorgeous. Starting from 2016 or so, we have yearly support and we are right at the bottom of this support. And here the situation is super straightforward. As long as that zone holds, and this is the 083 minus a bit, right? Let's use the actual numbers, 082, 083 zone. Okay. As long as this zone holds, well, this thing is bullish, right? I mean, that's the only expectation. Since we have this fantastic level right here, even if it breaks, it's very easy to switch to the sell side. We just need to confirm the breakout, okay? We don't want to buy something like that. And if you're not sure how to do that, you can check out some of my videos. I'm explaining um, interesting strategies and methods of confirming the breakouts and how you can be handling that, or you can check out the traders terminal co-op where we are doing exactly this kind of stuff with price action, etc. Then we are moving forward. Um, pound franc is the next one on the list. This is also kind of obvious. The price has been pushing downwards and from one stage at approximately 2011 we started forming divergence. This is the first divergence right here. So the first is the first low is uh, in 2008. And then a few years later, we got the low. And this is the first divergence. This is where we started um, feeling that bullish pressure from the indicators. And if we draw the line from all these years, we can see that the indicator is extremely bullish, at least the way I'm reading it. On the other hand, the price got stuck in a range. So we had the first false break right here. Then we had, an, <clears throat> excuse me, another false break. And we can see all these huge, massive candlesticks and the spikes they've created. Uh, simply showing us that the price is being rejected from these levels. Now, looking at this most recent dynamic resistance or trend line, we can see that the price is breaking above. Now, why am I not drawing 
like this or like that. Again, you can check out the videos and understand why and how exactly I'm drawing lines. But that being said, this is the most recent one and the valid one, which shows us a breakout. And this line is on the way. So let me just move that arrow for a second. We got the breakout and the price is currently holding above this breakout zone. We can also see right here that we have a very nice consolidation zone. So we've tested that consolidation zone. And if I zoom in a bit, we'll be able to see, I'm just going to remove everything for a second. We'll be able to see that uh, the price is actually breaking and now retesting. You see that? Breakout, retest. So as long as we're holding above, the expectation, of course, even based on that alone, is for the price to push higher. But then if we go back to monthly chart, we can see where we stand on the higher time frames on the bigger picture. So I'm definitely bullish on this thing. Uh, you can see some short-term levels marked. Well, short-term, that would be at least swing, right? Uh, for the fifth wave, which again, if the count holds true, this is where the projection of the fifth wave is, in my opinion, somewhere around here, then pullbacks and then continuations, etc. But the longer term view, of course, is bullish. And uh, as long as we're holding here the levels that we mentioned already, this is supposed to be moving up. Then we have CAD yen, which is a bit trickier in terms of counting it. However, the total output that I got from this thing is that we might expect a ranging situation. And since we created this high already, as long as we're holding below that high, I think we already got the first wave. We're looking at pullbacks, a retest of that level. And my expectation will be for Cadian to deliver in the upcoming weeks or months some bullish pressure here, all right? And then, of course, uh, assuming that this zone holds, this is going to be a buy opportunity. All right, moving forward, pound yen, looking at pretty much the same situation. Uh, in my opinion, this is a consolidation. This is a range. Last time we checked the top. So pretty much same rules would be applied here, same idea. As long as the top is holding, as long as we don't have any um, significant breakout, confirmed breakout to the upside, we are likely to see the price pushing lower versus the bottom. Once that happens, of course, as we can see those are weekly bars, so it will take some time. If that happens um, and we go here, this is the next level. That's around the 150, uh, 148, 49 zone which in my opinion will present bullish opportunities but in this case that's step number two or three depending on how we count them then we have pound Aussie. <clears throat> pound Aussie is also um, pretty much put inside this consolidation zone triangular zone but the interesting part here is if we go ahead and check out where the volume stands look where it is at the moment so this is where we have a bit of discrepancy but last time we checked the top which means we should be looking at the bottom if this is going to remain uh, the structure that we're trading so if that's the case my idea would be to look for pullbacks here so the first the very first step i would expect in pound aussie is for the price to go down all right, that would be step number one. Then once we enter this level, I would start looking for the possible reversal signs and the optimal level I would love to see is somewhere around here. Why? Because that will give us a breakout, false breakout of this zone. That will give us a, a retest of this line. And pretty much we're going to be uh, respecting the boundaries of this structure here. So going and testing this thing before buying is the optimal. It's what we 
would love to do because this is the best, the cheapest price we can buy, right? So um, that's about pound dozy. Now we're going to actually cover a few more than 10, consider them bonus if you want. But the next one I have on the list is Euro Kiwi. And for Euro Kiwi, the structure here is also more or less clear. We have a bearish cycle completed. We have this bullish divergence and we have the price pushing upwards. Now the question is, what's next? Is that the end of the wave? And we're going to continue lower or is that the first wave of a zigzag? And then we're going to create something like this. In any case, the answer is I'm expecting the price to go lower. And that's what I'm saying. I don't want to be uh, focusing so much whether this is ABC or whether this is uh, double wave, right? It's pretty much the same thing. As long as you get the idea of where the market is supposed to go, if you have two scenarios, compare them. Look at what, what these two scenarios are telling you. Do they contradict or do they agree with each other? So once again, we, we had this example uh, in one of the previous ones, but here the idea is that I'm expecting this thing to push lower. We have a fantastic level. This is the top of wave number four based on the previous count. Um, these things pushed up. It started forming divergences on the histogram. RSI and uh, MACD are still not there yet, precisely, right? And we still don't get any reversals. But the point is, from that zone, we should be looking at uh, bearish possibilities. And again, this is not about the specifics this is about the general directions what we can expect from the market in the upcoming weeks and months so euro kiwi definitely a fantastic opportunity in my opinion i certainly hope so that we're going to see some kind of false break here clearing stops because trust me guys there are many people already selling this thing uh, their protection is of course above this weekly zone this weekly swing so clearing these tops would be a perfect sign and then closing below that we are going for some decent bearish move. Eurocut is also uh, quite interesting. Now, this could be a bit trickier. And the reason is if we consider this structure to the upside impulse, and then we consider uh, this as a double wave, that means the double wave is now completed. We have the optimal level where we can uh, want the price to be, but the divergences are not confirming that this is the end of it. So we have level, the structure fits, we're at the 100%. I would expect for the price to push up. However, we have question marks in terms of the confirmation of the count when it comes to the divergences. Uh, then another thing I want you to consider here is, without any structures or anything, you have a trend line. This trend line, <clears throat> excuse me, the first attempt for a break, breakout was right here, which we can say it really failed because we never managed to create a new high. So very deep pullback, uh, approximately to the 90%, and then we're going lower. And now we're attempting to break again. The problem is, uh, as I said, on the monthly chart, we don't have any divergence against, but we also can see a very significant close below. Maybe this candle closed slightly below it, but there is no the powerful momentum that we can see right here when it comes to the breakout. Uh, so this could be a suggestion that the price is going down, but now I'm going to counter this argument because look what do we have here now the structure i'm not going to to talk about that but probably most of you are familiar with divergences now we're talking about weekly chart first divergence in place second divergence in place okay so this is the first one this is the second one now we have a false break we did not manage to close above this thing to call it a false break but we can say where this thing is going right 
it wants to push up at least for correction. So if the scenario where we have a trend line breakout and this is going uh, to continue somehow with impulsive structure, whatever, pull back and down, right? We still need to see the uh, the push up. And as I said before, it's good when you're doing discretional trading and um, you have different methods. It's perfect when these different approaches to the market analysis fit together because then many people are looking at the same thing that you're looking at. And once we, we have this cluster of uh, opinions that overlap, we see these fantastic moves, right? Because even the big guys, they have to base their uh, decisions on something. I'm not talking about people who are just moving money for businesses and companies, right? This is something you have to do and they don't really look at anything. But those who are speculating in one way or another, they must have some kind of logic behind it. So the more uh, of these methods fit together, the better it is. So that's about your cut in summary. I would expect for the price uh, to push up. An interesting confirmation from weekly chart will be once we break here. But again, this is already falling into the specifics, which I guess there is no need for. Cut Frank is another fantastic opportunity in my opinion. Uh, we came here, we stopped next to this zone, we got the bounce, and this is where the price pretty much started to consolidate. So once this consolidation is finished, I would expect for this thing to create a new high, go ahead and break that zone. What else we can say here is that the last time we touched the bottom, now we have three points on the top, two points at the bottom. So we can easily draw lines, right? It's not just a projection, but the idea is that I'm looking for buys. The lower we get pullbacks, the better. Pretty much what I'm trying to do is buy as cheap as possible closer to this low, right? And this is where the lower time frame analysis comes in play. This is where uh, you might go down and start looking for whatever it is that you're trading to help you find entries if you like the setup. And then finally on the list, we have QEM. This time we're looking at monthly chart. Again, we have triangle consolidation of some sort. Last touch was at the bottom. This is where we're going to involve um, the corrective patterns using Fibonacci's. And what we can see here is that this is a bullish structure. This is a divergence. We're expecting for the price to give us a pullback and notice where this cluster is, right here. This is the optimal level. We're currently somewhere around, right, at the bottom of it. So if we focus on this as ABC, we're at the moment at the 61.8. Pushing down to the 100% or at least spiking through, through that level will require the price to break this low. Now, it really depends on the way this is going to happen because this is going to be the difference between a false break and a breakup, right? But in general, if we can uh, make a summary of some sort, that's the zone. I dropped here the 100% because this is still possible if we're doing that, right? To go a bit lower. But in general, in my opinion, we're going to see a bottom somewhere around this level and we're going to see interesting bullish opportunities are likely going for a range or maybe even fifth wave uh, or whatever based on the count here to push up, right? Again, I don't want to go into any specifics, fifth wave, fourth wave. It is suggesting to go up, right? Once we confirm here the reversal on the lower time frame. So this is my favorite list. I think we've hit... 12 for 13 pieces. So consider the last two, three parts <laughs> as a bonus. If you have any questions, guys, you know where to find me. And I'm wishing you a fantastic year ahead with plenty of pips. Have a good day.